What's going on, enthusiasts? My name is Drew. Welcome back to the PC Planet podcast in the virtual studio today. I have Corey. Hey. Oh, damn. I missed my cue. Hi, I'm Corey. <laughs> How's it going? Admin of the Facebook group Southern Colorado Computer Enthusiasts. I uh, do not run it by myself. Got a lot of other people helping me out with this. One of them is Drew here that's with us right now. And we have a guest star as well, Kyle. Ahoy. I don't really do ben. anything special. He drinks and he knows things. Yeah, yes, I, yeah. I do those special things, yes. <laughs> uh, Jack of all trades, master of none. No, that's yes. But, <laughs> but yet still better. But yet still better than a master of one. Indeed. This that's is true. Jack, of, Jack of all trades, master of none, but yet still better than a master of one. I like it. Put that shit Very on true. a t-shirt. I like that. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd rock that t-shirt. You should put that on my space. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I still have a MySpace account, the password for which I cannot remember. Oh, yeah, same here. I never cancel it, so it might still be out there floating around somewhere. I think I even had two accounts at one point. <laughs> I think I did too. Heck, I never shut it. I never shut it down. I may still have a Zanga account out there somewhere. Oh my god! <laughs> oh man! With that well. good old, with that with that good old email that. Everyone remembers their first email, and you oh, think yep. back on it, and you're like, oh, God. I still have mine. I still mine have was, my first email, I, email address. I, I do not have mine. Mine was, I like cheese whiz at sbcglobal.net. Ow. <laughs> SBC Global. Oh, how funny. <laughs> mine, mine was and is, because I still have it, and I still have access to it. <laughs> Scraztastic at hotmail.com. See, that's so much better than mine. <laughs> I don't remember my first email address, and if I did, it was probably something really terrible because I was what, probably fourteen. Yeah, I did I got mine? I, I was in. I was a freshman. <laughs> Shoot, that was. Uh, I'm gonna date myself here. That was back in '96. Like Hotmail was just just started being a thing. <laughs> You've got mail. Uh, that was AOL. Uh, yes, I, was gonna say, I, my... I I know that was AOL, but 1996. True. Yeah. True. It's like it's like uh, the Family Guy Blue Harvest, their Star Wars episode, where he's like, "You can reach me at Han Solo at CompuServe." Comp, yes, CompuServe. Ooh, CompuServe. I remember CompuServe. I remember Circuit City. Dude, I my oh, first yeah, ever my first ever speaker was bought at Circuit City. That's brilliant. it was a dis it was a display model. Of a 1,000 watt, 15 inch Jensen subwoofer, and I bought it for twenty dollars. What? Hell I miss yeah. micro. I miss. I miss Circuit City. I almost said Micro Center. I miss Circuit City. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, mean, I would miss Micro Center. All my stuff. Oh, do you yeah, guys remember? The, do you guys remember the Zap Zaps? The Zip Zaps? The little RC cars? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Dude, uh -huh. I had a whole kit. I had a whole kit of Zip Zaps. But yeah, I, <laughs> I remember those. I, I remember going. Yeah. To, I remember going to like. I, I remember going to like Radio Shack to 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 buy higher RPM motors. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, good old Radio Shack. I remember Shack. going to Radio Shack and actually be able to get like electronic parts. Yeah, dude. Dude, mm -hmm. for real. You need you need a capacitor or a three eighty six. You know, or a or a tube a for your tube TV. Yeah, yeah. you can go to a freaking mm -hmm. Radio Shack. Yeah. I'll tell you what killed Radio Shack was they were late to the party with online sales. Like Best Buy oh, started going yeah. Best Buy started going online, you know, Sears started going online, all these companies started going online, and instead Radio Shack tried to focus on their mobile division. Mm -hmm. And that's why they ended up capsizing. Forgot Although they, they had are a mobile division. They are back. How did you forget they had a mobile division? That towards I mean, the end, that's like all I, they were was cell phones. Yeah, I, I knew actually, they had one, but I forgot they did that. I was actually their AT and T rep for, um, well, like all of the Radio Shacks from Denver to Colorado Springs for Verizon. 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 Oh, really? In, in oh, Leavenworth, funny. Kansas. Yep. <laughs> well, correction. I was going to be. I got the job there. I applied at Maximus Gym as a trainer. 
they turned me down, so I went next door to Radio Shack, and they were like, here's a job for eight fifty an hour, which, you know, this was like 10, 12, 13, 14 years ago. Like, eight fifty an hour wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. And I got the job, and I was, like, wrapping up my training, and then Maximus Jim called me and said, hey, if you want to come over here, we re we went over your application again. If you come over here, we'll pay you $13 an hour. I was like, look, I'm sorry. I know I'm kind of being a jack about this because I just finished training, but eight fifty an hour versus thirteen. Bye. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, kind of a no brainer. <laughs> uh -huh. you, uh, yeah. you know what's also a no brainer? Uh, hitting that like button. Oh yeah. Oh, nice, nice segue. Smash uh, that like as, button. As always, PC Planet <laughs> is sponsored by the Like Button Incorporated. The Like Button. Hit that shit. And it's right down there. Or, or yeah, it could be up there, or there. Or it somewhere. could be in the center of your screen. It all depends on what platform you're seeing this on. <laughs> that was great. Could be, could, it could be behind you, in the living room. You know, who knows? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> could be right in front of your face. <laughs> that was your index Anyways, finger. Anyways, that was my pointer finger. Pointing at the like button. This is uh, my index <laughs> finger. <laughs> that's, that's the rude pointer finger. Yet still a pointer finger. That, that's the exclamation finger. <laughs> I like it. And not that we're big enough yet, but ladies and gentlemen, that has that is how you become demonetized. <laughs> well, that's fine. <laughs> I'd rather de I'd rather be demonetized than content claimed. Yeah. Every time I every time I see like a lower like a, a newer channel talking about getting demonetized, I always think of Van Helsing when he's looking at I forget his name, but he's he's looking at him, he's like, You can't swear you're a monk. He's like, Well technically I'm a friar. So I can swear all I want. <laughs> Damn it! Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know that 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 friars couldn't do that. That's good to know. I learned something. There we go. <laughs> He's like, you can't every day. swear you're a monk. Yeah. He's like, well, technically, I'm just a friar. So, damn it! So fuck off. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, we were talking about uh, Radio Shack and mobile and like tech support stuff. Uh, one of our topics today is. Well, tales from tech support. Crazy stories from way back when, when we did tech support things. Corey, what do you got? I opened a laptop the other day and there was a cockroach in it. Oh! Yeah. That's good. That's a fun one. Yep, that that was one of the uh, few times we got permission. I'm sorry, wasn't me. I apologize. I'm tired. Was not me. It was one of our other techs. Uh, we got permission to e-waste it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mind you, this is a Dell laptop. It's still under warranty and everything. Nope, cockroach, e-waste. Straight to the Wow. Bin. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's pretty crazy. I'd be like, I will e-waste that for you. <laughs> yeah, and right? I actually had, I had a, uh, it was a termed employee, uh, so he got let go, uh, not voluntarily. I don't know the details. All I know is that I was in charge of collecting his laptop, you know, all that stuff, right? Well... Really, they're only supposed to return the laptop. You know, our company doesn't give a shit about keyboards, mice, docking stations, what have you. Right. This guy this guy returned everything. All okay. Right. And I swear to Christ, it looked like he bought, he went to Walmart, he got a bag of Cheeto Puffs, went... <laughs> oh, no. Crushed up the bag and went... All over everything. Oh, that's I spent, funny. I spent an hour and a half deep cleaning this freaking laptop and i'll be honest his keyboard and mouse it looked like it looked like he he dumped like honey on everything and then poured the cheese stuff on top of it like those oh, i man. literally I, I was literally <laughs> heading back to my office i saw one of the janitorial staff and i was like hey do you have a bottle of cleaner and they were like yes i do i went hold up the keyboard i went and then threw it in the e-waste bin Oh man! Oh, oh that was drizzled, so disgusting. Drizzled honey on it, and then did that whole that chef. What, what they well, call it? Does yeah. that like, weird yeah. thing to get Honestly, the salt, with, but with the uh, Cheeto dust all over I the. I wish, <laughs> I wish I could say it looked like it was done intentionally, but it wasn't. Oh wow, that's that's unfortunate. Like <laughs> that's how it looked, and you could tell that it was from daily wear. Wow. Like what? the only clean spot on the mouse was where the finger actually is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, oh, like this wow. was yeah. for daily use. So that the back of his fingers, his or her fingers, look like his laptop. I would assume, dude. It, it was disgusting. Oh, it was but yeah, so that's disgusting. gross. 
That's wow. horrendous. Yeah, just lots of eating while using it has to be. In yeah. fact, actually, uh, no, absolutely. On. That's on, why I don't on, eat on. and then use my keyboard or mouse or controller or anything because yeah, that shit can get really, really gross. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Hang on. Hang on. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen for a second. <coughs> oh. Oh. Wow. Is that uh, how how they managed to get their keyboard to grow hair? <laughs> I was going to say, it looks like somebody installed a bunch of key switches on a carpet. <laughs> yeah. It's a yeah, Chia keyboard. It was, it's a Chia yeah, keyboard. It was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty gnarly. Ooh, that is... How about you, Kyle? You got anything? Oh, well, yeah, you got me on the... You reminded me of uh, some stuff that I found when I was refurbishing machines for action computers a long time ago, oh, back boy. in the day, which, which was a Wednesday, by the way, in case you didn't know. It's always um, a Wednesday. Yeah. So says Dane Cook. Um, yeah, I, I found lots of weird spiders, gross spiders in them. Uh, some of them uh, found a couple of mice. Ooh, um, yeah. Yeah. Those those were always those were e-waste in. Except for you know, some of the spider ones. You know, he, 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 he would make us make it work, which I mean, it's just a spider. Why not? But um. Yeah, the mouse ones were gross because, uh, and you can always tell right away when you get a batch that has a dead mouse in it because you, you can smell it right away. It's there's unmistakable. <laughs> it's just a matter of who's going to get it. And you can tell usually what stack it's coming out of. And then it's just a crapshoot on who's going to get the one with the mouse in it. Ugh. And yeah. uh, if memory serves, Kyle, you had something, you, uh, you were saying something uh, a while back about phone returns, lost phones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I used to work for a company, um, uh, an oil and gas midstream company. Uh, so their the purpose of that company was to transport um, <laughs> oil and gas products okay. through pipelines and stuff for for the, um, you know, whoever would pump it, they would hire the company that I worked for to transport whatever they pumped out of the ground and then process it to whatever they wanted to get out of it. Um, and I managed all of the cell phones for this company and oh man there were so many phones that would get lost in pipes um dropped in in like crude oil that that's happened before um and then uh, well, probably the weirdest one was when someone had their had their phone smashed by a pig um are you guys familiar with what that is not not an animal pig oh but... okay uh no i don't know what a pig is I don't outside either. of a so farm. let me let me paint this picture so these pipelines are that they have things you know that travel travel through eventually they get they'll start getting you know build up on the inside so they have to clean it somehow so the way they sure. clean it is by putting this giant metal plug through it that cleans that gets out all of the gunk and and cleans it so they pressurize it and they send this this plug through the pipeline and it pushes all the gunk out and this guy left his phone on the edge of the pipe. Oh no! Um, when the pig was coming through, and and so all of that sludge that's been built up over time is getting pushed out, and it just it ended up take just taking out his phone. And then the pig comes out at oh. such force, like people have been killed by standing there in the wrong time. Uh, that's how bad. That's how fast these things come out. And uh, <laughs> so I mean, this stuff's coming out really fast, and it just obliterated his phone. There was nothing left like there was some oh. ch chunks but yeah there was nothing not much left of that oh. thing <laughs> it's, the, it's the forbidden butt plug yeah <laughs> i was gonna say it almost also <laughs> just sounds like a big gigantic steel q-tip yeah pretty much yeah there's like brushes on it on the on the kind of edge yeah edges, so it is yeah. totally just a big q-tip for pipes yeah yeah so it's basically giant. just a giant plug that they send down the pipe to clear out all the sludge yeah it's not a butt plug, it's a sludge plug. Sludge plug, I was, yeah. <laughs> I, I was saying that for my wife, because as soon as I said forbidden butt plug, she was looking over at me like, what the <laughs> fuck are y'all talking about? Anyways. Well, I, I've got a pretty good one, and I think, you know, we talked about this uh, in private, but privately uh, a couple weeks ago, but uh, or a week ago-ish. Uh, my first day on the job at Netflix, uh, last call of the day, had a lady call in. She was super, super upset. Uh, what about, well, Netflix had decided not to renew the contract for a little show called 
real housewives of whatever the hell city it was at the point uh, at that time. And this lady was furious. Oh, no. This lady was absolutely livid. She was saying crazy, crazy, crazy things like, this is the only show I watch on Netflix. This is the only thing I pay for for Netflix for. And I'm just like, you really pay eight bucks a month for one show? Really? I mean, I, I couldn't say that. But <laughs> I'm like, uh, maybe you should cancel your account now instead I mean, of yelling at me fair, about it. Right. To be fair, it's like 20 bucks a season for a show on disc at Walmart, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. if you're just going to binge it real quick, I suppose. You know, Well, yeah. are, do they have seasons of that show? Can well, you buy seasons it, of that it's, show? It's, they do it in like multiple oh. cities. Right, yeah. So it's like Real Housewives of New York, Real well, Housewives like, of Manhattan, or whatever the hell. Oh, she's probably like watching all of them. It's like, oh, I, I but need yeah, my Housewives. But yeah, it was like... Netflix had taken down like all of the rest of them. And there was like just one city left. And then mm. just that one day, Netflix just decided not to renew the contract. And just that one day, she just w- happened to want to watch it and it wasn't there. And she decided that it was my fault. And oh, I'm God. like, okay, lady, I'm not going to take this shit. Um, yeah. My direct supervisor uh, jumped in and she started talking to this lady and this, I don't know what this lady said to my supervisor, but she had to hand the call off to her direct supervisor because she <laughs> had to go, like, ball her eyes out. I don't know what the hell this lady said to her. Jesus. But the end result was we ended up actually banning her from Netflix. Yes, you can get banned from Netflix if you are abusive to their support reps. So don't goddamn wow. do it. Total side note here, I was just curious, so I looked it up. It's an international reality television franchise that consists of 11 series in the U.S. and 21 international. Like I said, Real Housewives of some damn city. Yeah. Wow. Holy crap. Holy crap. Jinx. <laughs> you owe me a something that's not for kids. Right. Sorry, children. <laughs> um, so that's my tale from tech support uh, today. Nice. Yeah, the only one I have aside from that is a guy, I got on the phone with him, and I was like, Hi, Chris, how are you doing this morning? And he's like, it's Christopher. Wow. One of those, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Mr. Serious over here. I'm sorry, Mr. Christopher. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but he also says bah humbug during Christmas time. He didn't even leave me a review. I'm, I'm sad about that. He didn't even <laughs> leave know, me any feedback. You know, I'd rather have no review than a bad review. That's true. That's true. Well, this is true, but like, out of all of the techs at our company right now, I have the, I don't want to, I'm not going to say the highest review, like, uh, feedback rating, but like, so there's a report you can generate where you, you can look at the amount of feedback, not the quality, but the amount of feedback from each, of each tech, right? Sure. So you can look at one tech and be like, okay, so this technician has had 21 users provide feedback over the last 30 days right so when you go through the list you're like okay so you know 21 23 19 7 14 and then you get to me and it's 65 and i'll be honest every single one of them like i'm not trying to toot my own horn here but every the last review i got the last review i got from a user he said that i was the best technician he did worked with in the last 35 years with the company yep you messaged me that i remember that Dude, I was so freaking stoked when I saw that. So to get on this guy's phone and be like, Hey, Chris, how are you doing this morning? He's like, it's Christopher. I'm like, oh, dude, I swear to God, if you leave me a bad review. <laughs> yeah, right. And I'm like, it's, it's not my fault. He left his company laptop in his car and it got stolen. Ooh. Ooh. And yeah. guess who didn't back up anything against company policy? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, man. Man. We we can go through the process of stolen laptop and all that stuff, but as far as you not backing up your data contrary to company policy, that is three and a half, five gallon bucket loads of not my fucking problem. Yeah. Oh man, that's kind of stuff would happen with me too. Like when people would lose their phone, or if they lost their phone and you know they got hit by a pig coming down a pipeline, you know they'd want a replacement. They want all their data back. Guess who the one would, who would have to deal with all that stuff? That was me. Yeah. Because all the the tech the tech support crew, like the just the basic people, didn't they didn't know how to deal with it. So yeah, I was I was tier three. 
Oh, did you have it like us where when somebody makes a ticket, it goes to the, like service desk and then service desk sends it to you guys, that kind of thing. Mm hmm. Yep. And of course, service well, I... desk never does their fucking job. They don't oh, verify yeah. the service tag of the machine. They don't do any troubleshooting. They're just like, oh, yeah, this sounds like a this sounds like a them problem. <laughs> yeah. One. Well, a couple of really common occurrences at Netflix where uh, people are really, really terrible remembering their passwords. Uh, oh, yeah. I discovered that oh, quite quickly. Yeah, that's um, a, that's when I figured out with phones too. No yeah. one remembers their freaking Apple ID or their Google passwords. I swear, or it's they insane. do remember it, or they do remember it, and caps lock was turned on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they, yeah, that's happened. Passwords were a big thing, and I remember there were a couple occasions. This was technically against company policy, but it was like, what else are we supposed to do? You where we'd have an old lady with a blu-ray player that had netflix built in and you know those blu-ray players are just crap they're just absolute garbage and the thing that i bet a lot of people don't know about netflix apps is netflix does not actually develop the app on each different platform that it's running on uh netflix might be in charge of like the android and the ios apps but in terms of the apps that run on blu-ray players or roku or whatever those apps are not developed by Netflix. They're developed by third party, generally the hardware manufacturer. Um, so when people would call them with problems that were only solvable by reaching out to the manufacturer, um, that's when things got really hairy because it's like, there's really nothing that we can do. And they're like, why can't you fix this? Blah, 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 blah. You're Netflix. And it's like, no, we are Netflix, but we didn't make the app. Right. Yeah, that and makes it was perfect sense. Always, it was always Blu-ray players. Always blue ray players. Huh. Yeah, I didn't know that it was either, but it makes perfect sense that it works that way. Yeah, and so there were a number, there were a number of instances where, uh, technically against company policy, but uh, being that a, a supervisor said, okay, f fuck it, let's just get this person watching movies and get on with our lives. <laughs> right, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes we l l really oh, did yeah. go into users' accounts and make their passwords like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm shocked that the system even let us do that. Mm hmm. Because yeah. it's a horrible password, and you should never have your password be one, two, right. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, yeah, damn, that's the same. That's the that's the password I have for my luggage. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And so so yeah, the passwords and Blu-ray players, Blu-ray players especially, were the bane of my existence. Another jokes, password jokes on struggle. you. I have my. I still use my PS3 for a Blu-ray player. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on Blu-ray players. The PS3 is a nice Blu-ray player. It is, yeah, it exactly. really is. <laughs> except, except for the one downside that you cannot rip a Blu-ray file and put it on the PS3 because the PS3 is in FAT32 format, which is a four gigabyte maximum yep. file size. Yep. Mm. The 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 best, the highest quality movie I ever watched on my PS3 that I loaded a file on was Avatar. And it was 3.99 gigabytes. That was a great movie, me, too. Yeah, it, it was. was. And it took, me, it took me forever to get that quality level. Because, <laughs> like, I would, get, I would get close. I would get close, and it's, like, 3.6 gigs. And I'm like, that's not good enough. So I try it again, <laughs> and it's, like, 4.01 gigs. And I'm like, fuck. Damn. I got to bring it down now. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you can't do that with any other normal Blu-ray player, either. <sighs> and then we got a, 4, a 4K TV, and now... All my Blu-rays look like 720p anyways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. That's the one thing that the PS3 doesn't have that some other Blu-ray players... I actually had a Sony Blu-ray player that had this... Does uh, really, really good upscaling. Nice. It'll That's even also upscale why, uh, DVDs. Nice. It's also why playing N64 or something on a, you know, 1080p or 4K screen looks like shit, too. Because those were designed to run on old CRT... TVs. Yes, they were, but you can get mods that actually look really good. Not the same. I know it's not the same, but if you're so inclined and you don't have a CRT kicking around, like me, I don't have a CRT kicking around. I do. <laughs> it's in the garage. It weighs 156 pounds. Oh, sweet. <laughs> it's a it's a freaking 32 inch tube tv in the garage is it and a i Sony got it trinitron i don't remember the brand 
Uh, I got it from a guy in the group, actually. Um, I don't remember how much I paid for it. I think he just gave it to me because they were trying to get rid of it. Uh, but the only way to turn it off is to have it plugged into a power strip and flip the power strip, turn off, turn off the power strip. It's the only way to turn what? it on and off. Yeah. But oh, it, it wow. Is a... <laughs> I, I am being That's loud. wild. H hang on, guys. <laughs> What's up, babe? Baby needs a bottle. Continue. Ah, uh, those babies in their bottles. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, I had something I was going to say. Oh, yeah, about passwords. I remember, um, so you know, when, pe when people would have problems with their phones, too, they would like their Windows password, you know, the Windows login password, you can just reset sure. it for them. They expected me to be able to do that for them since I was, you know, like the top oh, guy boy. for cell phones. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> so I yeah. trying to explain to them that the Apple ID is completely separate was yeah. like... It was, yeah, it was like explaining rocket science to an, a dog sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was quite yeah. difficult. Yeah. Doesn't quite work like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I wish it did, it does not. Mm hmm. <laughs> so you're still on the Yeti. Yeah. I am. Yes. That'll be interesting when you switch over to the other one. Yeah, it'll be blind for me too. I, I didn't want to do it earlier because I wanted it to be blind so it could be as, as unbiased as possible. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, it'll be, I, I've heard other people when they've switched live, but you know, it'll be just interesting to see, you know, really, you know, for like personally, like for myself, if it actually does sound as, as good as what I've heard in other That's videos. Fair. And each person's voice is not going to be the best for each microphone. Exactly. Like, yeah. And, and that's one thing that is, is nice about this mic is it go, it picks up down to 10 Hertz. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So it picks, has a pretty low range, which is, um, uncommon and it is cardioid too. Dang. I should probably save this for when we talk about it. Probably. Um, cause most are not cardioid. Uh, like yeah, I was going to say for a we headset were, mic. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, when you were using that mic on your headset, when we were doing the test for this like it was picking up everything everything yeah so that's that's a three oops that's a 360 mic um and a cardioid won't won't do that yeah that's what i like about the the yeti yeah you have this the selector yeah yep that's actually why i went with the yeti originally is because it had that the mic i had before didn't and it was picking up so much noise uh from behind me and echo and you know keyboard clacking and whatnot so yeah, yeah I, I actually a, I got the Yeti for specifically for the cardioid option. Yeah, I went from a snowball to a Yeti. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people do that now. The Yeti line comes with the um, the Blue Voice software, which is really phenomenal. Yeah, it, it's really nice. You can get a lot of the same effects as a, a dynamic mic um, from the Yeti condenser mic. It's pretty cool. Oh, wow. what is a dynamic mic? I, a dynamic mic is is something that's gonna. It's more like what you would get from an XLR mic, like a traditional, uh, you know, mic that has like an audio plug-in, as opposed to a mic that you just plug in via USB cable. Yeah, so one that you'd probably find in a studio. Right. Yeah. So okay. studio mics are always going to be dynamic mics. Okay. And there's I very. I, I'm not a streamer, so I don't know about microphones. I I use a headset. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of had to give myself a crash course on all this stuff um, when I started streaming. And well, are we ready? Do we want to segue into this right now? Or do you want to sure. keep going with what we're talking about? No, this is a good segue. Okay, cool. Um, but um, yeah, so I did. I had to give myself a crash course on on microphones and, and audio pickups and, and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I did a ton of research. But yeah, con condenser mics are pretty much any, well, every pretty much every single USB plug in mic is going to be a condenser mic and you know even headset mics are condenser mics um dynamic mics are what you'd find in a studio it's a professional quality you can adjust everything in it um and what it picks up you know like you're um you know, i don't want to get into too much can you know technical jargon about it but yeah you can cu customize everything on on pretty much everything on a dynamic mic not so much on a condenser mic Though software like Blue Voice gives you dynamic microphone options. Okay. Now, is this something that's only available for like new released Yeti mics, or can you 
do like a firmware update for older yeah you you can do a firmware update for older ones too so my this one um i got this one quite a while ago and you know blue voice wasn't really even a thing yeah or it was but only on um like the i think it was the the really high end blue mics mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. and then they made it available to all the entire yeti line so okay. yeti yeti classic which is what mine is considered now and and, and yours drew yep. and then uh now they've got the yeti mini um you know that one will do it as well which honestly that one's not quite as good as yeti classic and then there's the yeti x now uh which has it as well uh, but yeah they made it compatible with you know as long as you do you know, the firmware up, updates and you have to get the lg or the i'm sorry <laughs> I, I do that all the time logitech g hub you have to get that to be able to utilize uh blue voice it's all oh, controllable okay. through that that's yeah and they, they made it available to anybody that had a a, a a yeti microphone um i think they did that about maybe four five months ago okay um yeah yeah, because like it's, two, two, three years ago, I got my wife a Blue Yeti microphone. So you think it would be compatible with that? Hell yeah. Yeah. The one that I'll your wife has is the same one that I have. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely let her know. That's that's good info. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just have to get that uh, Logitech G-Hub. And then once um, it'll recognize that you have a Yeti microphone plugged in, and then you just go in there, enable Blue Voice. Yeah, you got it. And you can. it has lots of uh, different voice modification stuff you can do too like robot voice alien voice all kinds of crazy stuff oh, I'm gonna uh, and you you can you can adjust um you know your eq for what it picks up you can adjust the the uh, uh compression the gate so that picks up so the gate's really nice um so it, it's basically noise reduction without having noise reduction okay it's it's really nice it basically won't pick up anything below a certain decibel level uh, which is quite nice and it also has a leveler a built-in leveler so if you get really loud it won't you won't get cut off you won't get um oh, what's the term shoot i lost it distortion um, of the top end or whatever right yeah, yeah basically it's just cutting off the top <laughs> peaks of your voice and that's why it distorts because it's not getting the full waveform and dynamic mics uh it won't have that won't happen so much in dynamic mics that's kind of a condenser mic thing um yeah so basically the blue yeti is a condenser mic but it has this blue blue voice option yes that gives it does dynamic its best to simulate dynamic functionality yes it does a pretty good job i'm using it okay. right now i have uh the only thing i'm running right now is the a uh, little bit of compression i've um modified the eq a little bit and uh and I do have the uh, the gate going, but no active noise cancellation. I do have, or noise suppression. I do have noise suppression running on um, uh, NVIDIA broadcast, however. Yeah, you can definitely tell because when you stop talking, it goes dead silent. Yeah. <laughs> Blue voice. That being All right. said, going from, going from like, like when, like a lot of times, especially back in the day when you had like this kind of noise canceling, it would be, if you're not talking, it would be dead silent, like almost like your mic was like muted, but then you would start talking and it would activate, but it would have like a few, half a second, whatever delay. So like you would start talking, but it would cut off the first like third of a second of what you're saying. Whereas these days it kicks on like immediately, like instantaneously. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. I, I've been really impressed with the noise suppression in in video broadcast. Oh, it's nuts! Drew and I were geeking out about it a few weeks ago. Like we were banging on our desks and clapping hands, and I was crumpling <laughs> a can, and he couldn't hear anything. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I think I've got it running right now. Uh, yeah, actually, I do. Uh, but yeah, when that's yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you, you broadcast can? is crazy. You can do a uh, noise suppression in blue voice, but it's going to be CPU bound as opposed to GPU sure. bound in mm -hmm. NVIDIA broadcast. So you'd, you'd want to have, you know, obviously a, a beefier CPU if you're going to be doing that. Okay. <clears throat> so like if you were using the blue voice alongside OBX, you're going to be pushing your CPU or OB yeah, OBS, you're going to be using your CPU pretty hard. Whereas uh -huh. NVIDIA broadcast would take some of the load off of the CPU. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're running your CPU pretty hard and it's not, you know, a, you a higher end CPU with a bunch of cores, you know, 
you're going to be running into some issues with the noise suppression. Okay. And uh, what kind of headset are you running right now? Oh, yes. I am running the Virtuoso XTs. Uh, okay. Just snagged these. Um, my previous headset were the drum roll, please. Virtuosos. I have so. a video broadcast on. I can't do a drum roll. <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah, no, same here. I was thinking <laughs> it pound on my desk, but it wouldn't have been picked up. Um, yeah, so I went from the Virtuosos to the Virtuoso XTs. Um, and both, oh my God, they are, are phenomenal headsets amazing both uh oh, will do ever the corsair virtuosos se's so and it's the same have... the corsair virtuoso xt's okay se versus <laughs> xt okay yeah um and there, there's actually a like the price difference between the two like the se's were 210 okay. uh the xt's come in at two 270 um, though uh, I did find them on Newegg recently for two thirty, which is a pretty Ooh. pretty good price, if I'm honest. And um, there's not a huge difference between the two, uh, if I'm honest. They they both have up to um, it's a twenty hertz to forty kilohertz, you know, so forty thousand hertz uh, wireless frequency range, and and both rocking <clears throat> fifty millimeter neo neodymium whatever however you pronounce that <laughs> magnet the fancy magnet that they neodymium use in, in speakers yeah neodymium yeah it's got 50 millimeter neodymium drivers in them um oh. both of them uh so it, the sound is is phenomenal um now you said they're wireless how do those 50 millimeters deal on battery life uh you know i've never ran them dead i've uh i don't i i do have some really long gaming sessions but um I mean, they say the battery life is like 20 hours. I've never gamed long enough to test that. Um, but you can. <laughs> I, I haven't, at least not recently. <laughs> and when I was younger, hell yeah, but uh, can't get that kind of time to myself anymore. Um, but uh, what I, I just, I plug them in, you know, at night. Once I'm done, I plug them in. So battery life's never been an issue. And um, if you, you can still hear them while they're plugged in, just fine. And if you do plug them in, get this, you get a frequency range of 20, 20 hertz to 96,000 hertz. Because the wireless functionality can't handle that level of bandwidth. Right. Yep, that was going to be another so, one of my questions. Yeah, so wired, these things are amazing. Absolutely uh, stunning. You know, Kyle, I'm going to point out, it's kind of funny because the light just turned on where you are. And you literally just went looking, you just, you literally just went from looking like you were in a studio to looking like you're the guy that crashes on your friend's couch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're right. The magic of lighting. <laughs> You've seen it firsthand. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> like, yeah, that's Dave. All he lighting. crashes here every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry he uses the downstairs bathroom <laughs> yeah right <laughs> see but don't that's go actually down there. kind of amazing uh what lighting does because here i was thinking you were like in your bedroom uh -huh. and you're not no yeah actually yeah you know kitchen's what? right right over there i wonder if i can actually find um give me a second here i'm looking through my youtube history uh can you continue talking i'll find it it's it's insane what I the video I was watching on how to light properly and all that. So yeah, so both uh, both headsets will do ninety six thousand hertz wired, um, but the XTs have a Bluetooth that they claim will do forty eight thousand hertz. Forty eight kilohertz over Bluetooth. Over Bluetooth, yeah. That's that's what they say. <coughs> that's I've that's heard. Quite I've heard it's claim. not. I know. I must say it does sound quite good though. Sounds way better than my Samsung buds. I'm sure I'm sure many things sound better than those. <laughs> yeah. I would hazard to guess that these Razor Krakens that you currently cannot see probably sound better than those. Right. Yeah. The Samsung buds. Uh certainly not the headset. I doubt these things even hold a candle. Uh <laughs> but I they have one feature that yours doesn't have, and that's the invisibility cloak. That's true. That is quite a nice feature. It's a feature, not a bug. Right. 
Um, yeah, the only only difference is that that Bluetooth. If I'm on, if I'm honest. Um, but oh, and, and the Bluetooth is also separate, so you can have Bluetooth running at the same time as whatever you're doing on the computer, and you can hear both of them, but you know at the same time, and you can control the volume separately. Wow! So it's 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 nice if you're a streamer, so you can be listening to your own music while. Oh sure you know you have sure. you know, music that you don't really care to listen to going on your stream or just no music at all you know? Found yeah it. i'm gonna share my screen so this guy is using uh just the do you see that yeah okay so this is how it is whoa that is literally switching his microphone and adding lighting that's it oh and also he threw on clothes that match the ambient lighting in the back mm. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice face. <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. He's using all the same hardware. Oh, the there it is again. All that. But yeah, that from that to that. Yeah, yeah. It's lighting. It's it's a game changer. Yeah, and all all that I have is a um, an Elgato key light air, and then those you know inexpensive RBG bulbs and the lights back there, and it you know gives kitchen. that look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the, in, in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it looks see, a lot better a, when that, that that's lights off. That's a, that's another benefit, actually. And actually, in this video, you can see. Hang on, in this video, you can see that the back wall is set back quite far. Yeah, that's quite a ways away. And that's the same with Kyle's camera. Whereas me, the back wall is only like eight or ten feet away. So any mm-hmm. kind of lighting I have coming from my key light or anything like that is going to reflect off of that back wall. Right, which is what you need. You, why you need to have colored lights back there to wash out the white. Mm. And I'm also going to point out that, like, you see the two lights on the sides, the halogen, mm-hmm. the yellow halogen. Yeah. And then he has a central blue LED right behind his head. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. And now, like, I didn't yeah, notice that like before, but yeah. Room placement know where uh-huh. you're going to be and plan your lights accordingly. He also has a key light to the left of him or on his right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's casting a good dynamic shadow. And mm-hmm. again, even other things like you wouldn't think of, like he changed his outfit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He just put like a jacket on like a brown jacket to match is... the, to match the ambience. Mm-hmm. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. And he closed his blinds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That helps. Yeah, you always want to have as soft a light as possible because uh, anything else. He also else modified. Will... He he also modified the focus range because he knows yeah. the back end, the back end is relatively sharp, whereas here it's mm-hmm. distinctly blurred. Yeah, which is why yeah, I I run a slight blur on Nvidia broadcast for that purpose to yep. give that same look. This is actually part of the reason why I'm looking at trying to use my Canon DSLR for streaming. Because look at mm. what he's using. Oh, yeah. You just need an Elgato cam link. And that's like, from what I understand, that is the best kind of stream cam you can you can use. Yeah. Is which, a camera uh, like that with, uh, with a cam link. Which Canon do you have, Corey? Hang on. I've got the uh, battery charging because I'm actually taking it to SCA practice tomorrow. But I have the EOS Rebel T100. With the yeah, optional I think telephoto lens. pretty much all, if most, if not all of the Canon EOS line, you can use basically as a webcam effectively. Yeah, yeah, I know a guy. I don't, I don't know him personally, but I know of a YouTuber that um, uses that exact camera for, or uses a Canon Rebel. I don't know exactly which one, but he uses that for his his stream cam, his mainstream cam. This is another one of my units. Here, let me go ahead and switch off in video broadcast. Or not switch it off, but change the uh, camera effect. Let me just do background blur. There we go. All right, so this is actually another one of the units I have. This is a Osmo Pocket. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. It is such a trip. Yeah, those things are so cool. Yeah, this thing has been a game changer. And it shoots in full 4K60. Holy crap. Wow. Has a full touch screen. A little a USB-C adapter. Yeah, there. so like this little USB-C right here, you can slide it out, flip it over, and pop it in. Oh, okay. And so those little things that are the c- connectors. Phone. Wow, that is so cool. 
you can plug it into your phone and at that point your phone becomes the viewfinder right and control module it synchronizes with the app that is so cool wow so you so does it work with the normal camera app on your phone no you download the dj mimo app and it synchronizes with that because i was thinking if it uh that's that's too bad I was thinking that if you used uh, like Droid Cam, uh, you could possibly use that as so here, a webcam. But I don't think that's. I've got work. my phone. I've got my phone. Let me go ahead and let me see if I can full screen my camera. There we go. All right. So let me go ahead and switch over the module. There we go. I'm gonna go and power it on. The thing looks like like a little, little tiny robot. And then, hang on. Why is my? Oh, okay. There we go. All right. So now I'm gonna plug it in. It will charge your phone, by the way. It is. It also functions as an external battery. It's so cool. And there we go. How about that? Notice I'm changing my phone's angle, but the camera angle is not changing because the camera is stabilizing. Oh, that is so cool. Now, let me see if I can do this on webcam. If I can. Oh, wait. Is it? Oh, it's because it's in, it's in slow motion mode. Okay, let me go and switch it over to 1080p. There we go. Okay. So... Let me see if I can turn off my key light. I don't know if that's going to help or not. Okay, you see my face right there? I mean... Yeah. Okay, so it focuses on that spot. Wow. Obviously, it needs decent lighting. But yes, you can track. So let me go ahead and flip the camera around. Yeah, you see that? <laughs> it really oh, is. It's like really a little cool. robot. So let me go ahead and focus on my, my face on the camera or on the screen. Oh, yeah. And it will track with the subject. Oh, that's nuts. Dude, Osmo Pocket, DJI, makes some awesome stuff. And like I said, it records in full 4K, 60 FPS. In fact, check this out. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yes, I pay for YouTube Premium. You guys can crucify me later. <laughs> this was oh, shot. Dude. This was shot with this camera. Yeah, the image quality is definitely phenomenal. Yeah, no kidding. But yeah, Three, two, one, fight. This is a SCA Society for Creative Anachronism. It is a basically like a full medieval reenactment. Uh, yeah, I actually practice this tomorrow. That's why I'm making sure all my so all my hardware is charged up and ready to go. Nice. Is that uh, that's before the land party? Oh yeah, yeah. This is like a ten or eleven o'clock in the morning. Eleven o'clock in the morning. And actually, hopefully, I have one of our group members coming to the park to, to drop off his Ryzen uh, 2600X for me to take to the LAN party because one of our other members is purchasing it from him. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, that whole thing, that sucks. Like, what happened with Steve? Dude, Steve, okay, for those of you who don't know, Steve is a member of our group. He is a phenomenal dude. This guy lives shortly from Micro Center. And this guy, he will go to Micro Center and he'll be like, hey, so I'm about to head to Micro Center. It looks like this is what they have in stock. Does anyone want something? And he'll buy the card for them and give it to them. And he does this once like every 30 days. Wow. Like, dude, fucking hats off to you, dude. And when he can't go, he, he hops in our Discord and he, just, he goes, hey guys, I'm really sorry. Life's getting crazy. I can't go to Micro Center this month. And we're like... Dude, you're like a freaking saint. Don't work. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. yeah, he's the reason I was able to upgrade my my daughter from a a 1063 gig to a a, th a one of the new 360s. Yeah, and and the, the fact that sorry. recently this guy he's had his car broken into like three times, uh, and they've taken like tools and you know health related items from him. And what was the latest thing, Kyle, that happened? Uh, okay? he, his, uh, so yeah, my, this, this headset, I, I switched to the, uh, the mic on the, on the headset here. Uh -huh. I don't know if you've, you've all noticed. It's, it's, it's quieter. Is it a it lot quieter? quieter? Yeah. yeah. Maybe I have to put it right here, but that's not effective. Yeah. It sounds kind of quiet. Maybe if I took the windscreen off, is that any better? Slightly. It's about the same. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. Well, so I go, that, that was the live test of the microphone on here. I mean, don't get me wrong. It sounds great. It sounds great. It's just quiet. Well, there we go. I'm back to the Yeti. Um, so, in my defense, I am deaf. I have hearing aids. Those two sounded identical. 
Okay. You know, it it is tough to tell the difference. Um, it's like it's like when you're at the eye eye care center and they're like one or two, and you're like, uh, <laughs> could you show me two again, please? <laughs> one or two? Huh. But it was just a little bit quieter. Yeah, maybe just a hair quieter. Hmm. But I'll be honest, I think the microphone quality of those head of that headset you got is fucking stellar. That's cool. That's good to know. Yeah, I, I've yeah. seen some videos that compared the compared that to a, a broadcast one and i thought it sounded pretty good yeah but no, i've never so, actually I mean, done honestly, it done myself honestly drew between my voice and kyle's which would you recommend for for audio quality in terms of the microphone being utilized i mean it's so it's definitely obvious that you're on a headset uh but the it's reason not... i'm asking the reason i'm asking is because i'm using a 40 dollar logitech G four thirty two headset, whereas he's using like two hundred dollar virtuosos. So I'm I'm genuinely curious from a third party perspective, in this case you, how does the difference sound between my microphone on my headset with Nvidia broadcast versus his virtuoso running Nvidia broadcast? I would say that if you have the extra two hundred fifty bucks to plunk down on a pair on that pair of headset, do it. Okay. The sound quality so, of this headset I'm, is I'm, amazing. I'm now, sore about that, but I get it. I now, get it, 100%. You know, he's switched back to the Blue Yeti right now. And so yeah. what I'm comparing, I'm currently comparing your headset to a Blue Yeti, which is not a fair comparison. And there is a bias here because I also have a Blue Yeti. Well, uh, again, like we just said, there's not, there, there wasn't, at least for me, there wasn't a huge perceivable difference between his microphone on the headset and the Blue Yeti. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's just g kind of goes to the quality of the Blue Yeti is, you, you know, and it, it, it's hold up. been such a long time since this mic was released. I got mine in like 2016. Kyle, can you do me a favor? You're muted. There you go. There we go. I, I saw the light turn green. <laughs> yeah, I'm back Question. on the, the headset mic. Turn off NVIDIA broadcast and redo the test. Okay, sounds good. All right, so NVIDIA broadcast is now off i'm on the virtuoso xt microphone i would almost say start talking and then switch over to the other mic like mid sentence okay. all right sounds good i am let's see what do i what, what should i say the quick brown fox real quick can you go ahead and like click your fingers to show that you're off of nvidia broadcast so when i switched to the yeti i, I had it the yeti was muted so <laughs> oh yeah okay i was gonna say because yeah, i heard the first click the first snap, but every snap following that was heavily yep. silenced. So I actually should say I am running a gate um, through Blue Voice on the Yeti. So it, okay. it is only picking up things above a certain decibel level. So maybe, I mean. Yeah, no, I hear that. I heard yeah, that. I hear that. Okay. Yeah, now it's gone. We heard it and then it went away. Yeah, probably because I, yeah, there you go. If I speak and then do it, see if it keeps picking it up. Yep, it does. Okay. Ah. All right. So I'm on the Yeti right now. I'm going to switch to the headset mic right now. Are you hearing lot, anything different? A lot quieter, and it's definitely more muffled. Okay. And that's without the pop filter. Right. That's without the pop filter. Uh, if I move the mic any closer, does that change how it sounds? It Not definitely terribly. helps with the volume. Yeah. But as far yeah. as the audio quality, I'm not seeing much of a difference in terms of the distance of the mic from your mouth. Yeah. So okay. NVIDIA, NVIDIA Broadcast's post-processing was definitely doing a lot to mitigate the difference between the Blue Yeti and the Virtuoso mic. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, because um, now there is a distinct difference. Yeah, wow. Well, that's also a testament to NVIDIA Broadcast, too, I suppose. Yeah, for sure. Because, uh, like, I'm good. Well, go, go ahead and turn on NVIDIA Broadcast mid-sentence. All right, I'm on the Virtuoso headset mic, switching on NVIDIA Broadcast right now. Are you hearing anything different? Keep talking. I, I thought I heard a difference Switched there. on N NVIDIA Broadcast. Now I hear a it's... difference. Okay. Yeah. But it's okay. definitely... It's, so the the... The Yeti mic definitely has a bonus in clarity and volume. Cool. Also, we don't hear your lips 
contacting as much. Oh, on okay. The on the on the Yeti, uh -huh. but then again, I also see that you have a pop. You have two pop filters on the Yeti. I do. Yes. Try so to that'll catch definitely, that'll definitely as much of the that. P's and S's and yeah, the the lip sounds <laughs> mm -hmm. and T's. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good well, cool. And I like yeah, it. and what's nice too is you can just take the mic off. So I like oh, I don't dude. need it. So I just take it off most of the time, That's and cool. I use my blue yeti and then with this way i can just you know since these have bluetooth i can just do bluetooth on my phone and i can you know have really high quality audio on my phone wirelessly yeah, it's it's nice oh yeah i like it yeah once once my wife and i have our own place i will have a microphone on a boom on a boom um well i'm gonna have a microphone on a boom i'm gonna have my monitor on a boom hell yeah oh and back to what you were getting at before with uh steve yeah the latest thing that happened with him was that his uh his car, like the lugs on his wheel were loose or something. And his wheel kind of partially came off while oh, he was driving. No. Oh no. Yeah. And then, Ooh. um, right before that happened, um, something when he was trying to take, he was trying to clean out his uh, family member's computer or PC and, uh, he was reseating everything. And, um, it sounds like what happened was maybe when he was trying to, I think he was going to reapply some thermal paste when he was trying to take the cooler off the, the paste had like solidified. And when he tried to take the cooler off, it took the, the processor out too and bent the pins. Oh. I remember that it's because he accidentally pulled it straight out. Steve oh, is okay. a great guy. Steve is a great guy and he's very knowledgeable, but it happens to the best of us. You could be yep. doing it. You could be building PCs for 20 years and people still make mistakes. And he pulled it straight up instead of twisting and then pulling to break loose the thermal paste. And like I said, I that could happen to anyone. Yep. I've done it. I've I've, I've done, done that more times than I care to admit. Yeah, yeah, I've made that yeah. mistake too. He just uh, so happens he got. I guess he got caught on this one. It just didn't work out quite so well. Doesn't always do that, but this time it, and it, the it odds were not in his like, favor. It sounds like. This guy tries, so for fuck's sake, this guy meal preps, okay? Yeah. And I know y'all can't really see me too well, but I don't meal prep. <laughs> yeah, he, he, and the stuff he makes just sounds amazing and so healthy too. Oh yeah, and like, we were at the last land party and I was like, hey man, you want a beer? And he's like, I don't drink. I'm like, you don't even want one? Like, it's a light. And he's like, I don't drink. Okay. Like, he doesn't smoke, he doesn't drink, he exercises regularly, he goes to Micro Center monthly for other members of our group. Like, holy fucking shit. Why is this guy getting so much bad luck? Yeah. He does all the things I wish I could do. <laughs> yeah. He does all the things I, well, I, I know I could do, I just don't. Because I don't have the, I don't have the, what's the word? Willpower. To do it. <laughs> drive. To yeah. Drive. Like, I'm, I know I should really but like like i wake up in the morning and i'm like you know what tonight i'm gonna have like steamed broccoli with like grilled chicken and then i get off work and i'm like ah, i'm gonna throw a hot pocket in the microwave yeah it's like i know i should i just don't don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i'm i i'm in the boat where i think eating I mean, is kind of a, a nuisance i don't i don't really like doing it it just takes time out of my day so I like things that are quick, <laughs> you know? That being said, my dad got a air fryer for like 20 bucks at a thrift store, right? Mm-hmm. And we had some hot wings out of it, and we loved it, and he ended up gifting it to me and my wife. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, sitting, right, it's sitting right behind awesome. me. Holy shit. Holy shit. We, it was Saturday night. We decided to have some pizza. We forgot that our oven stopped uh preheating the ignition whatever in it coil the ignition coil car talk um <laughs> the the heating coil and it went out or something it's getting fixed but like we don't have an oven right now and it was uh one of those refrigerated like walmart pizzas you know and we ended mm -hmm. up throwing in the air fryer at 360 for like six minutes you can only do like one or like two or three slices at a time but dude it came out 10 times better than the oven yeah no, oh man yeah fried fried chicken in an air fryer is killer Oh it's always God. it's always oh juicy. Oh man, it's it's awesome. Oh yeah. I, I have you ever God, had you, smoked you get pizza? No, but that sounds delightful. Tell me more about this. So 
uh, last year, my mom let my dad, or she, she got him a, uh, a Traeger smoker, and he's just been smoking fucking everything. Uh, uh-huh. We had nice. we had smoked wings tonight. It was absolutely delicious. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, homemade smoked wings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice. Yeah. Um, well, so one day I had gone to Papa Murphy's and got a pizza, and I was going to put it in the oven. And I was like, wait, they have instructions for smoking a pizza. That is so freaking awesome. And I love let it. me tell you, you want smoked pizza. <laughs> okay. You want oh, smoked pizza? Yeah, that sounds that sounds like it would be really good. It's uh, yeah, heavenly. we have one here. I, I think I'm gonna. So, so you just ha- put a pizza just right right on the smoker and just. Yeah, uh, Papa Murphy's in fact actually has specific instructions for smoking their pizzas. Yeah, okay, and they there's t- one and real they close. T- and they take food stamps if yes, you're on they a budget. Do. Hell yeah! So, do we have anything on the 3090 Ti launch? Uh, only a rumored launch date and possibly launch prices of Unless more than you want tech to power spend. Up. Unless yeah. you're looking at tech power up, don't focus on them. Their site is not their site, but their page for the 3090 Ti is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, filled with a whole bunch of outdated information that was probably never even correct to begin with. Mm. Yeah, the yeah. tech power up site reports a. Launch price of sixteen ninety nine, one thousand six hundred ninety nine dollars. And what did you see, Drew? Um, I was looking. Uh, it appears that a Canadian retailer, uh, post or, or not a Canadian retailer, a uh, a Canadian leaker who is known for high quality leaks, uh, said that the launch price for the thirty ninety Ti will be somewhere in the realm of U S. Four thousand dollars. Oh, see, that's just not even worth it. God, that is not yeah. even worth it. Hundred percent, not even worth it. I mean, and why will it right be four thousand dollars? Because Nvidia knows that they will get four thousand dollars. If you are the that's kind insane. of person who needs a thirty ninety Ti, you are probably also the kind of person who can spend four thousand dollars on a thirty ninety Ti. Here's my yeah. question. Here's my question. NVIDIA launches the 3090 Ti at 4,000, right? If this is accurate, they launch it at 4,000, right? We have AIBs, Gigabyte, MSI, you know, Asus. Oh, the selling sky's their the limit. 30, Selling their... Th- hold up, hold on. Selling their 3090s, their, their 3090s, th- you know, the non-Ti version, for around the $2,000 range. Do you think that they're going to put their price at 4,000? Because let's be honest... The 3090 Ti uses the same fucking PCB as the primary circuit board as the 3090. It uses essentially the same firmware. It's just got a minor, the same VRAM. It just has a minor boost in clocks and efficiency, which to me is not worth $2,000. And you know as well as I do that consumers are going to freak the fuck out when they see a $2,000 card suddenly become a $4,000 card. Mm-hmm. And these Gigabyte Aces, they're not stupid. They're not stupid. They're going to know that this $4,000 card is not twice the performance of a $2,000 card. So do you honestly think that they're going to go along with that MSRP of $4,000, if that's yeah, accurate? Yeah, I actually do. And really? here's why. Um, okay. It, when when the 30 series first launched and this even happened with the 20 series too um the aibs were part of the people that were scalping um the yes, aib started marking their cards up like crazy yeah. and it was kind of ridiculous and i think i i forget it was either it, either steve or linus called called it out um steve. jay jay's two cents probably called it out too uh but yeah the aibs were marking them up like 2 3x retail yeah, uh, like Zotac. Oh my god. Zotac is Dude. a big one. Uh, Zotac has been awful with this. So, based on the historical behavior of the AIB partners, not only do I think they will go along with Nvidia's pricing if that it is in fact the correct pricing, I think they will charge even more. Dude, I mean considering we're considering the 3090 had an initial launch price of what was it, 1500? Uh 1499, I believe. Or twelve ninety nine, actually. No, it was fourteen ninety nine. It was fourteen ninety nine. 
And now we're seeing 3090s. Yeah, yeah, we're going F- between tw- yeah, so we're now we're seeing AIB 3090s going for between 21 to 2500. Mm-hmm. Like dude, I think 45 4500 to 5000. dollars Yeah. It's it's not worth it and they have to know that this is not worth it. If they yeah. did, if they did, then we'd be seeing 3090s retail for 3000 to 3500. Yeah, and how much RAM is in this 3090 Ti again? I think Probably it's 24. RAM. 24 still, so same as the yeah. regular 3090. Yeah. So the only... It's literally the 3090 to the 3090 Ti is the 3080 to the 3080 Ti, yeah, or it's... the 3070 to the 3070 Ti. It's the same Man, I... fucking card, but with a ramped up BIOS. Uh, it's got a ramped up uh, V BIOS, and it's slightly more efficient. Yeah, with it's, a it's higher an, power just 3090. Yeah. I, I just don't see how that price difference can be justifiable. It's it's not unless you're the shareholders. Yeah. yeah. And if, if Nvidia honestly launches this card at four thousand, the only people who are going to be buying it are the rich elitists. Which, mm-hmm. let's be honest, they don't call it the one percent for nothing. Right. Yeah. I entirely like how much extra perform has anyone tested? Well, there's still an embargo on this, I think, until the launch date, if I remember right. So I would love to see what actual performance difference you we're actually going to get from a 3090 versus a 3090 Ti. I don't even I know that more. any reviewers w- have them. Right. Yeah, I thing. think I think the the embargo on it is is set for the the uh, date of release. I don't, yeah, I don't know yeah. if anybody has them. I haven't seen anybody that has them, but I know they can't really they can't even talk about it until the actual date of release. Usually, it's a little bit beforehand yeah but not I have this no one, idea which you know begs to begs the question why you know why are they waiting why are they not letting these people talk about it you know a little bit ahead of time is the performance difference just that bad i mean to you know? be fair it's always been that bad. way yeah I mean, to be fair uh, yeah it's exactly always been that way point. i mean like like jay he got a card you know two or three days before launch and he put a video uh out for a gpu i forget which one but he couldn't install it. He couldn't power it on. He couldn't go over its actual specs or anything like that because of the embargo until the date of launch. Mm-hmm. Well, usually I thought they, they could talk about it for like a week or so, like right before launch. They can usually go, the embargo is like back. a couple days or like a week or so before yeah, launch. I take that back. They can go over the specs and stuff, but they can't go over the actual performance difference to the prior gen yeah. cards until the date of launch i think they're basically just limited gotcha. to hey i have one we're testing it mm-hmm. yeah and they, they gotcha. can't even really test it like jay he got the uh what was it the uh the 3070 fe card before it was launched and he wasn't even allowed to install it oh okay wow yeah he was able to put it in a he was able to he was allowed to mount it in a pc and like show the cable routing and all that stuff, but he was not allowed to power the PC on. Dang! They oh, also crap. probably didn't supply him with drivers. That's another that's fair possible point. too. Yeah, because if you don't have drivers that are that actually work with the card, the card's not going to do anything. Right. So, uh, quick segue here: Artesian builds. Do we have any updates on that after the employees left? Uh, yeah, the Artesian builds brand is gone. <laughs> that's the I, I know there's a. <laughs> There's a YouTuber that I'm aware of. Um, he goes, his channel's called The Quartering. Okay. Um, you know, it's it's a all, all one word, no spaces, The Quartering. Um, he offered to help them find jobs. You know, he, he runs a, a firm um, and he says if he doesn't have a, you know, spot there, he'd, he'd help them find a spot somewhere yep. else. I know. Which Steve, I thought was pretty cool. He's Steve got like a, he doing that as well. a thousand or he's got like a million followers on his or subscribers on his YouTube <laughs> You know, and I thought that was kind of cool. He'd, he'd help them. He was off, gave him the offering to help him. Yeah. It's kind of funny looking at uh, Artesian Build's Twitter account. Um, after the fiasco of them offering ambassadorship to random Twitch streamers, and then a Twitch streamer won a new PC, and then they looked at her Twitch account and on a live stream said, nope, you're not good enough. We're changing the rules. As of March 8th, we are sad to announce that, effective now, we are freezing, suspending all activities. Ongoing is analysis by outside counsel for reorganization to ensure fair treatment of clients, creditors, and employees. 
We expect more info by month's end. We are open to assistance and investment. They're asking people to invest we are... in their company. Oh, wow. We are open <laughs> to assistance and investments. Yeah. Dude, Ooh, how, yeah. how to invest? Dude, literally. They're hoping for the an same... angel investor. Dude, in, the, my God. In, the, in the same freaking tweet, we're shutting down all processes at the bottom. Please invest in us. Tell me you're a stupid oh investment with. Tell me you're a dumbass investment without telling me you're a dumbass investment. Yeah, that's just just a rabbit hole of. <laughs> shit. Like, I just read that yeah, tweet. Right. I was like, "We're shutting down everything. Please invest in us." Why? <laughs> Why would I invest in you if you're shutting down everything? Exactly. Yeah. You just gave me every reason to not to. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Thanks for your twenty million dollar investment, and it's gone. Yeah, and on yeah. February and and right on March fifth, three days prior, <laughs> on Twitter. At this point, we are examining a potential employee-led buyout of the company. Thank you for your support. <laughs> <laughs> tell oh, me, man. tell me you're a bad investment without telling me you're a bad investment. It's like, well, I, that feels to me is like kind of like a desperation plea of like, we don't want our brand to die. Please, you know. Please, oh, you know, you 100%. Know, but it's like, why, as an employee, why would I want to continue the brand when the brand itself is now in the garbage? It's exactly. Especially considering the fact that they had, they actually had to have another YouTuber come in to save their ass. Jay's Two Cents mm -hmm. with Meta PC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. It was well. Jay's just, Jay did his own build for the streamer, and then Meta PC also did one. Yeah. So they yep. got a twofer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got yeah. a twofer, if not more. Right. It's crazy. And uh, last up on the docket is, dude. Have y'all seen these prices on the GPUs lately? Yeah. Uh. So that was kind of a big thing this week. We've got GPUs just falling out of the sky dude for real <laughs> mass you influx at, of inventory yeah you look at new egg and it's like in stock in stock in stock in stock in stock and for like mm -hmm. actually somewhat earthly prices now <laughs> yeah, yeah 6900 xts in the one thousand dollar mark yeah, yeah or I even the thirteen hundred dollar just... mark like it's crazy mm -hmm. and yeah, just weeks and... ago they were approaching two thousand for yeah. A lot of them. And we've got yeah. both Newegg and Micro Center have a, an Asus, or sorry, ASRock uh, Challenger D 6700 XT for five ninety nine. Dude, that's ridiculous. I'm really hoping that this is a actual trend rather than a one-off spike. Mm -hmm. Or Part dip, dip, of, dip, I should say. Yeah, I, I hope so too. And... I have one major concern, and that would be the fact that all of the fabs, where do they get their neon? That's a fair point. Where do they get their neon? That's a fair they point. They get it how from did, how did we Russia. Go? Mm. Well, here's the thing. Oh, do you think there's a correlation there? Because we went from I... out of stock, 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 to suddenly everything's in stock. Now, yeah, well, think... so yeah, it's, it's tough to tell. Um what I think we may see happening is what we may see happen in the future is we're going to see these price drops because inventory is picking up uh, supply, you know, is kind of coming back to normalization. Now the fabs and, and all the other companies that use neon for their products and processes and things, they do have stockpiles and stockpiles and stockpiles of stuff. They're not going to run out anytime soon. Well, here's but, the question. How did they go from out of stock on everything to in stock overnight? Uh, we have, we, we, you look at anyone who's been following the GPU market, you look at Newegg and everything. Newegg, Best Buy, Micro, Micro Center, out of stock, out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. Suddenly, overnight, we have three retailers no, that we know of. We haven't looked at others, like you know, B and H photo video or whatever. We have three retailers that suddenly have everything in stock. And at crazy how prices. Did, yeah. 
how did we go from nothing in stock at insane prices to everything in stock at reasonable prices literally overnight? Yeah, no, it what, really was what literally happened? overnight. Yeah, um, what happened? Yeah, I'd like to I, know that too. I, I have, no I idea. have <laughs> absolutely no idea, and I I don't even know that I could even speculate because I have no idea what what would even cause such a dramatic drop literally overnight. Right. I mean, there yeah. was the uh, the thirty eighty Ti, I believe, uh, was uh, it, it, in Australia could be had for like twenty two ninety nine Aussie um, on. On March sixteenth, it was twenty two ninety nine. I think yeah. on March seventeenth, it was fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, wow. what happened? It's like there was somebody, some there was some manufacturer that had all of these PCBs, all of these chipsets, all these chips that was just sitting on them, sitting yeah. on them, sitting on them, sitting on them, <laughs> and then said, "Let him go." Right. It could also be that they were missing some critical components and then just all of a sudden they were able to get those components. And then all yeah, of a maybe. sudden they had a whole bunch of cards. Yeah. I'm just wondering know. from where. Because, because let's be honest, if something is out of stock, you don't manufacture 10,000 cards overnight. Right. And you, you know as well as I do that there are people that are watching these websites and as soon as something says in stock – they buy it. And it's been a few days since then, and they're still in stock. And there's also not people doing that. So how did they get thousands of cards manufactured overnight? I have... Unless unless they were getting these cards in and just sitting on it, out of stock, out of stock, out of stock, until they got a sufficient amount and then said right. in stock and lowered the prices. That's certainly yeah. possible. Yeah. But I'm sitting here looking at this 6700 XT at Micro Center, and it says they have 22 new in stock, but it's been in the 20s new in stock for like five days. Huh. Oh no, there's wow. something that doesn't, there's something that that doesn't there's something going on that doesn't make sense. Right. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Something even, is even weird Micro about Center, that. Micro Center had the 1660 Super on sale for $450, and they've had that price for months. And then suddenly, overnight, they dropped the price to $329. Like, yes, Micro Center has sales. We know this. Every company has sales. But usually these sales are like 10% off, 20% off. You don't go from $450 to $329 overnight unless something happened mm -hmm. yeah i i like could i'm only... not a, i'm not a i'm not a mathematician or nothing but 450 minus 330 that's that's more than 10 percent mm -hmm. way more yeah no that's almost 25 percent actually yeah and tell me the last company you saw that had a 25 percent off sale <laughs> yeah that wasn't going out of business. Right. That's what I was just thinking. Yeah, no, exactly. Absolutely. Just some go, some go out of business. Yeah, yeah. I could only speculate at this point. Hmm. Well, we can speculate until the sun explodes. The fact of the yeah. matter is prices are dropping. Capitalize on that while you can. Yes. And, and as prices are dropping, it also brings to mind uh, another elephant in the room regarding GPUs is VRAM capacity because... If you have read about the kind of power draw that the new cards are are expected to have, it begs to Dude. question the yeah. kind of performance that we're supposed to expect and the type of VRAM. And and suddenly, you know, as as I'm playing Far Cry 6 and trying to load 4K textures on my 3080-10 gig that gets maxed out, which I think even may, maybe if I you know, dumb down some of the settings, maybe I can squeak under and get, you know, hit that 10 gig mark, but I still, I couldn't do it. Suddenly that makes 30, you know, 30, 80, 10 gigs not look so appealing. And you know, maybe even, you know, something with a higher VRAM count. Cause obviously um, the VRAM is going to be a longevity thing, you know, like uh, something yeah. like a 3080 yeah. with 10 gig is now not looking quite as, as good as, 
maybe some of the AMD cards or like a 30, 60, 12 gig, you know, if you're, yeah, you know, if, uh, cause, uh, cause you know, I can't, I can't load these textures anymore that we're going to be seeing. And I'm probably yeah, going to have uh, to upgrade before, before 4K, someone with a higher VRAM capacity. A 4K tech, uh, yeah, exactly. Cause a 4k texture mod, it could be a mod today, but a year from now it could be standard. Right. Yeah. And it was, well, it was a standard one from, Far Cry, like the manufacturers, they packaged this game with an optional 4K texture pack. And it was, you know, it was, it wasn't a mod. It was something that they offered. And, uh, and I, it said 11 gig plus. And I thought, well, maybe, you know, I could change some of the settings and kind of squeak in under, under that and work it with 10 gigs, but nope, nope. And, And that's crazy coming from Far Cry 6 because Far Cry has always been a really well optimized game. Mm -hmm. except for the first one but we're not going to talk about that (laughs) yeah i i mean having a 30 60 12 gig i at first i was like okay 12 gigs and a 30 60 really but like question drew yeah do do you have a do you have far cry 6 uh no i do not i was gonna say if you could get it and install that 4k texture pack i'd be interested in seeing a comparison between you and kyle with this 3080 10 gig. I, I could do that here. I have a, a 30, 60, 12 gig upstairs in my daughter's room. Well, yeah, do it, oh, man. There you go. Yeah, and she has yeah, Far Cry that. 6 on it. I'll, I'll, I'll test it out. Yeah, record some benchmarks. That would be great. Because, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, uh, Drew, so far we don't have any uh, guest stars for next Saturday, do we? No, not not, as, not that I know of, uh, unless we want to bring on Cameron and his phones. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is like 10 million phones. Dang. <laughs> yeah, that would be, that that would be definitely good. That would be definitely good for a live stream. Seeing the comparisons between the 3080 with the 4K pack, identical settings, identical rig, identical everything, just with the GPU swap and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I actually have to, I need to install a, an M.2 in her machine. I could swap, uh, yeah, I could do that. I could do that this week. Yeah, probably. Um, uh, Kyle, do you have yeah. an M.2? Yeah, I've got, I, I, do, I have like four of them just chilling. Oh, well, shit. If anybody wants one. <laughs> <laughs> well, so at my company, our laptops use 512 gigabyte M.2 drives, right? Oh, nice. Uh huh. So that's why I was like, I know I still owe you 40 bucks. Do you want a 512 gig M.2? Uh, I got, I got, well, mine are, the ones that I have are smaller. They're um, 250 gig. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, they're they're 870 Evo M.2s. Yeah, these are just uh, Toshiba or whatever M.2s. They don't have a heat oh, nice. sink or anything on them. But I mean, they're they're 512 gig M.2 drives that were pulled out of e-wasted machines. I have like three of them. Hmm. So like, I know I owe you 40 bucks. Do you need an M.2 drive? But if you already have like four 860 Evos. Yeah. They're just small capacity. I'm not super pleased with the capacity. I'm pretty sure that they were laptop ones gotcha. i traded those for that um z590 motherboard i had the aorus okay. ax pro well do you want a 512 gig in that two drive sure i'll take sure. one yeah <laughs> that works well, that would actually be do you, want, do you want uh well i take that back before we continue on this uh do we have anything else for the podcast oh yeah maybe we should talk, talk about that afterwards <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah i mean you with with those gpus the way there i mean Oh, like I'm seriously questioning whether or not I want to hold on to this 3080, you know? Yeah. By the way, like, Drew, I'm wondering, I'm tr- Drew, I'm trusting on your editing skills for the last four or five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This Sorry, one, I, this I, one's going to be fun. There. <laughs> this okay. one's this one's this one's going to be fun to edit. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm going I'm to be up late uh, tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> this one's not coming out till Monday, gentlemen. <laughs> What were you saying, Kyle, about the GPU prices? Uh, we've you know pretty much already passed that. I've, I've said everything I need to say about that. Oh, okay. But yeah, I mean, just the with the uh, suddenly anything with a higher you know anything above ten gigs is looking real good right now. I think. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm really concerned about that. Talking about it because I have a RTX gigabyte rtx 3070 aorus master you've got eight gigs yeah but this was like one of the top three 3070s to get Mm -hmm. 
and I'm like, dude, oh yeah, yeah, it's the one with the screen on it and everything. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's I don't. Oh, sorry, I had my cables tucked, so I tried to move my webcam, and it was like, nope. Also, a video broadcast is gonna <laughs> screw that up real good. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I can turn I could turn that off, but yeah, I'm just looking at this. 3070 Aorus Master, and I'm like, dude, this was like one of the top, top, top 3070s to get, and you're telling me that it's going to be obsolete in a year or two? Right, yep. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, they're going to be building games for these new cards that are coming out, which are sounds like are just going to be hands, just like leaps and bounds above what is available now, and that's what they're going to be building games for. So now... It's like I said even, before. Looks like I'm going to be going through Skyrim again to buy me <laughs> yeah. some time. Yeah. Yep. Triple A titles are going to be a premium commodity, I think, coming speaking, coming up. Speaking of Triple A titles, I noticed something recently. So, everyone's aware that the Call of Duty Modern Warfare, when it launched, and you bought it and you downloaded it, and you suddenly discovered that it was taking up like 200 gigabytes on your system. <laughs> yeah. Call of Duty Vanguard? Ultimate Edition took up sixty. Mm -hmm. What happened? It's most of it's Warzone on Modern yep. Warfare. You think? Yep. Yeah. Because what you really were downloading were two games. Right. Yeah. Warzone and then the multiplayer. Even and Warzone so, though, is huge. I mean, oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Warzone okay. is absolutely massive. Mm -hmm. I noticed that because when I downloaded Modern Warfare, it was like two hundred plus gigabytes on my hard drive, and then I grabbed you know vanguard and it was like 60 and i was like what year is it but <laughs> yeah. you think that's bad try flight sim 2020 that's a oh yeah game. i don't even want to yeah talk that about one's that. huge I don't even want to talk about that, that is dude, a big my, game <laughs> my dad showed me that game he was playing it on his msi laptop and dude that game is insane like he had he had his mic on and he was like Cessna 223 coming in west side. Bearing is 332 by 287. I know I fucked up those numbers. I don't care. The fact is, he was actually having to use his microphone and speak the... Oh, like, yeah. What the Talking pilot to would ATC. say. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, you can even en enable real flight, like real flights that are happening. Mm -hmm. Like where they're, you oh, can yeah. see the plane yeah. flying and everything. And it yeah. does weather simulations. Um, uh-huh. Really, really accurately, too. I remember when there was that hurricane. Uh, I forget which one uh, that was. I forget where it hit. Uh, but it was actually like the game was actually modeling it, and people were actually using the game to go fly into a hurricane. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Don't uh, try this at home, kids. Yeah, I remember <laughs> when that first came out. I, I have uh, Xbox Ultimate, so it was free uh, for subscribers of that. Um but there was so many problems downloading it initially. It was insane. Oh, yeah. Hey, enthusiasts, we apologize greatly for the interruption in this week's episode. Uh, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, we went way, way, way over time. And we just had to wrap things up because it was getting really, really goddamn late. Uh, if you enjoyed what you saw or heard today... You know what to do. Give that like button a smack in the face. Hit that subscribe button. And make sure you stay tuned for the next one.